RCX Studio 2020 allows users to operate the robot as same as PBX. In this video, we'll describe how to operate robots on RCX Studio 2020. To operate RCX Studio 2020 in online mode, the control right needs to be set on an external device. Please refer the video, Outline of PBX Operation, to learn about the control setting. To watch robot movements in offline mode, please use the 3D view function. It is able to zoom in and out by scrolling the mouse and change the angle by moving the mouse while holding down the right-click button. To control multiple robots with one controller, users need to select which robot to operate. In this section, we'll describe how to operate the servo. Double-click Servo in the window tree, then the Servo dialog box will be displayed. By clicking on and off buttons of motor power, a user can process servo operations of all axes of all robots. By clicking buttons on the All row, a user can process servo operations of all axes of the selected robot. By clicking buttons on each axis row A1 to A6, a user can process server operations of the selected axis of the selected robot. If servos of all axes of all robots turned on, the whole servo lamp in the controller monitor will be lit. Free buttons enable to release the brake of the selected axis. Click OK to release the brake. If a user clicks Cancel, brake will not be released and the message will disappear. In online mode, vertically moving axis could fall due to the gravity. Please be careful of workers' body being pinched or caught in the robot or the damage to robots and facilities. In this section, we will describe how to operate the origin return. Make the robot ready for the origin return. Please refer the video, PBX Operation, Precaution of Origin Return, for the details. Double-click Origin, selected robot in the window tree, then the origin dialog box will be displayed. The status lamp will be lit if origin return is completed, and if it is not, the status lamp will be off. If a user clicks Perform for all axes, all the selected robots will perform origin return. If a user clicks Perform for each axis, the selected axis will perform origin return. If all the axes of all robots complete origin return, the status lamp origin complete will be lit. For the origin return of all axes, all the axes will not move at the same time. However, they will operate in order according to the robot parameter settings. By default, the parameters are in the order of 3, 1, 2, 4, 5, 6.
In this section, we will describe how to operate the jog. Double-click Jog in the window tree, then the Jog pane will be displayed. Select a coordinate system from the unit pull-down list. Please refer the video PBX Operation Jog Operation to learn about the coordinate system. Select the specified speed from the speed pull-down list. It is also possible to enter the number directly. If the background of value is red, it means the changes have not been completed. Please click Set to complete the change. Enter the value directly in the inching distance text box to set the inching distance. If the background of value is red, it means the changes have not been completed. Please click Set to complete the change. When a user presses the jog buttons, the robot will move according to the selected coordinate system. When a user presses and releases the button once, the robot will move in the direction according to the set inching distance. When a user presses and holds the button, it will move in the direction while a user presses the button. When a user releases the button, the robot will decelerate and stop. In this section, we will describe how to operate the point trace. Double-click Point Trace in the window tree, then the Point Trace dialog box will be displayed. We will describe the movement to the absolute coordinate position by PTP Motion. Select Absolute for the trace type, and select Point to Point for the motion type. If a user checks the option speed, the movement speed of the point trace will be the product of the auto speed and the option speed. Refer the select point pull-down list to select the target point number for the point trace. The registered point data will appear next to select point. Please refer the video Point Data Editing to learn how to register the point data. Click Trace to perform the trace movement. Check the multiple select to set the multiple points for the point trace. While one is selected on the multiple select list, Select the point number and click Add to List. The point number will be registered in one of the multiple select lists, and the list will move on to two. Select the next point number, then click Add to List, and then the point number will be registered in two of the multiple select list. Repeat this for as many points as needed for continuous movement. Click Multiple Trace to perform the continuous trace movement. Check the Arch option to specify the arch movement. Here, we will demonstrate how to operate the third axis to get past the highest position. Enter 0 0.000 to the arch position of A3. Click either trace or multiple trace to perform the trace movement with the arch motion. Arch distance 1 is the distance from the current position and arch distance 2 is the distance to the target position. If the arch distance 1 and 2 are not entered, it will follow the axis parameter settings. By default, the value is the maximum input value. Check Enter Position to perform a trace movement to the entered coordinate position. 
However, this function cannot be used at the same time as the multiple select function. That is all for the video, Robot Operation.